Hey, welcome back to the Wednesday warm up. So the idea here is that we're going to do a couple little warm up drawings together to get your creative juices flowing and hopefully unleash you upon your own creative projects when we're done. So uh, of course, it doesn't have to be Wednesday for you to do this. Uh, I just want to put these warm up videos out on the channel on Wednesday nights um, right here to keep your pencil moving and just keep you inspired. So if that sounds cool to you, please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any of the future drawing videos or other videos I have for artists. And this is for artists of all skill levels, whether you're aspiring or a professional out there. It's just a little something to keep you uh, motivated and uh, moving. You're probably on YouTube uh, looking around for things to uh, inspire you and kind of energize you. And I hope that this kind of helps. Okay, so get your pencil and paper or pencil and pixels ready. Uh, whatever it might be, and let's do tonight's warm up together. Now, I always like to uh, start with uh, a classic scribble challenge, and tonight I'm drawing scribbles that have been sent in from the audience. So I'm going to do this one from Deborah K. Allen. And um, again, scribble challenges are very uh, simple thing that you can do when you don't know what to draw. You can draw your own scribble out. Uh, I have other videos on that as well. But scribble something really fast. Look away and uh, kind of take a look at it and see what you uh, what you see in that drawing. And I like to tell people again, maybe the first thing that you see, draw it out. Even if it's silly, doesn't matter. This is a warm up sketch. This is nothing that's gonna be uh, crazy. And by the way, if you wanna send your own scribbles to me, you can DM them or email. I'll put an email in the description. Or even if you'd like to send a actual scribble in the mail, I've got this lucky PO box at Draw Die Club, box 13, Scottsdale, PA, 15683. Uh, and maybe if you uh, send the scribble and I'll draw it and I'll send it back to you, maybe with uh, a sticker or something. I just thought of this idea. So <laughs> it sounds like fun. Um, let's try it out. So yeah, this is what I'm working with today. What do you see here? I already know what I see. So I'm just gonna start drawing it out. And again, I must say again and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I immediately saw like a bunny ear right here. So I'm going to draw that out. I'm drawing in red tonight just because I am just kind of cartoony looking bunny. It also kind of forces you to maybe draw in other styles that you wouldn't think of, kind of explore a little bit. So there are a little eyeball there. Again, it can be completely silly. Now I see more here. I'm going to get to that. I right. also don't like to, I don't like to erase at this point when I'm doing these. So if I catch myself erasing, looks like he maybe has like a little sack over his back or something. Maybe that's his other hand and yeah, doesn't have to make sense. He's got a little saddle. Maybe there's a little dude riding him. So you can just use your imagination there. We, all right, cool. That's weird. All right. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really know where his other, his other um, foot goes here. So. Let's just do that a little cottontail. And then I think down here, I see another animal shape, right? So maybe this is like uh, his little fox friend. Okay. It's really easy to forget how fun just cartooning is. If you're working in like more of a realistic style of some kind, uh, you can forget uh, to loosen up and just do the cartooning that um, can really make uh, a style develop over time. So keep that in mind when you're uh, cartooning this. And remember, it doesn't have to be uh, a masterpiece here. You're just trying to get this pencil moving and use your imagination. So here I see, you know, these uh, the squirrel and maybe, or what is this, like a fox of some kind, right? And then I see, of course, you can see here, I got a pigeon going on over here. 
and maybe they're like, I don't know, you know, like my brain when I'm drawing just starts to come up with, uh, you know, fun, fun ideas here. Maybe they're bank robbers. <laughs> maybe they're all friends from the forest and they're all going on a little adventure together. Right. And, you know, you might come across something that's uh, going to spark a, a bigger idea. You know, this could be a children's book or this could just be a throwaway drawing, you know, um, totally fine. No one has to see this. And again, it can be as silly as you'd like. And you could keep drawing if you wish. Now, this is about, you know, I, I might I might noodle around with this a little bit more um, if it were just me uh, not recording myself for you. But I don't I wouldn't spend too much time on this. You can see that I only spent a couple minutes getting that out right and again you could do your own let's go down another layer here let's just scribble out something real quick right there it's fun to it's fun to do other people's scribbles but what do you see here um you know I actually, you know, it's just these things can come pretty quickly after you start to get uh, used to this. You might see, I see a nose here. Maybe like a little grumpy old man face. And then it, it becomes a little fun challenge that you can do. You know, that's why it's the first thing that I do when I warm up. Because you could do this on a post-it note. You could do this, you know, on a digital tablet if you're drawing digitally um right looks like that <laughs> looks like that uh, troll uh character from the internet <laughs> the mean guy right <laughs> make him kind of expressive kind of gives you a, an excuse to just play around like i said um you know i don't know what's going on with the rest of his, his body here maybe he's like hand there this is, again i'm not even trying to uh, really draw in any kind of style or realistic style i'm just having fun and using the shapes and that's something that we often forget about too when we're drawing is um, to look at the form and the simplicity of uh, shapes and function in your drawing a little bit more that sounds that sounds really uh that sounds fancy i don't want to get too fancy here but uh, yeah, it's really easy to forget to look for the simple shapes and to simplify your artwork. So uh, use the scribble challenge as a way to um, do that. We're gonna do one more here. I'm just, I'm having fun with it. So, um, you know, if you're drawing digitally, you can change to a different color if you want. So we'll swooping motions there. All right, so that's a new scribble. And hey, you know, feel free to screenshot these. That might be fun too, if you're drawing digitally out there, screenshot these, um, draw over and show me what you uh, saw in the drawing or let me know in the comments below. All right, well, let's see here. Get rid of our sketch there. Just gonna fade this one out. And, you know, doing this live, it's, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself, I'm gonna force myself to draw out the first thing that I see. And, you know, you could overthink this, <laughs> but I, and, and again, it's going to be very silly when I'm about to draw. It's going to be, there's a mouth shape there. It's kind of like a woe is me. And it's a snake. It's a snake shape that I'm seeing. You know, it's the first thing that popped out. So, and it doesn't always have to follow uh, the lines that might be there on the paper right just to kind of guide you but and uh you know like maybe he's having a rough maybe he just had hot sauce or something i don't know it's a little, i don't think even snakes have doesn't it listen this isn't a snake anymore it's a snake-like creature <laughs> you know, you're using your imagination and it doesn't have to be anything he ate something. That's what's up. He ate something he shouldn't have. And now his belly is like, oh man, indigestion. Like, what did he eat, right? 
So your brain just kind of has to make up these, uh, have that dialogue as you're drawing, and it kind of helps you forget about uh, whatever else is going on in the world, like just escape to this uh, fun little uh, drawing place, right? So that's the uh, that's the scribble challenge. And again, if you want to send me your scribbles, go ahead and DM them. However, I'll put my email address in the description. We've got the, uh, the P.O. box. Might as well try that out. Go ahead and send me some stuff to the uh, P.O. box there. Let's really confuse the uh, local mail ladies. I think that'll be funny. I think, I think this, uh, what's this draw or die club thing? I promise it's not about uh, any kind of uh, real death or anything like that. It's just that when you aren't able to draw every day as an artist, you can start to feel a little dead inside. That's kind of why it's called draw or die. That's how it is for me. Um, if I don't get to draw, I get a little cranky. So draw a die club. All right. That was really fun. I could probably, if this were just me, you know, I've spent about 10 minutes doing these. I could fill up a half an hour pretty easily. And um, you might get inspired. Those things could be stickers. You know, this could be a little weird, goofy sticker of some kind. Or, you know, this old man might be saying, give it the old college try. <laughs> and here we have the rabbit. I kind of, you know, it's a different style. I would never... I would never draw in this style again, but it's different, you know? It made me kind of go outside of my boundaries. These are, you know, this could easily start to be its own little story, a little fox and a pigeon. Maybe they're best friends outside, you know? Children's book, there you go. That's just how mine wa my mind works, but I think that it's good to um, have that kind of uh, way of getting your mind in that mode of thinking. Today's main exercise we're not gonna do a daily drawing prompt today. We're gonna work on um, probably one of the most difficult things for beginning artists and even some professional artists and definitely uh, AI art cannot draw hands. We're gonna draw uh, hands. You know, this is not a uh, how to draw uh, hands video. I am not a teacher. You may be able to draw hands way better than I can, but we're going to not just draw hands, this is a warm up. So I'm showing you what I would do um, with the hands. And I'm gonna just pick a different color here. Let's just pick some blue and make sure I'm on the right pencil there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up this, uh, this sheet here, which is pretty much a YouTube size screen sheet, but I'm gonna turn it sideways. And I'm gonna fill this up with as, as many hands as possible. And I'm gonna show you how I draw hands. This might not be how everyone draws hands, but it's just how I would do it if you weren't even here. Um, and uh, you can do this again on post-it notes, whatever. So I'm just using an iPad here. Um, <clears throat> and the first thing I do, you know, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty quick at it. So I might use a scribble effect there because I know the, the basic shape. But what I'm doing when I look at hands, and I'm gonna get a little closer there. I'm looking for like a bean shape like that, or like a mitten maybe. So think of just drawing a mitten. If you can draw that thing, like a little bean, let's just draw it again. A little bean with a little nubbin, that's a hand in a mitten. I mean, <laughs> um, and you start to see that when you're looking at things. So you just draw that over and over again. That's the basic shape, right? And then the faster you do it more and more, you're going to get faster. Um, you're going to see the little, I'm going to darken that up a little bit. I think. No, I'm going to use this. You're going to see that shape. And I'm always thinking about, you know, the fingers coming off of it. Actually, let's get a little bit deeper into that. Like how, because I see it automatically and you might not, but um, when you see that shape coming in, right? that bean shape. I usually kind of split it in half in my mind. Let's just pretend that these are lines I'm seeing in my mind automatically, not drawing on paper. Split that in half, that mitten, that glove, that thumb here. And I'm just gonna draw a cartoony hand for you to, to reference for right now, just cause it's a little simpler. But you see there, you might look at your own hand and kind of realize, oh, look at that. That's the, the palm and uh, you know, you've got the split right in the middle because you're gonna have four fingers, right? So you want to divide that into four fingers. And usually the middle finger <laughs> is uh, longer than the other fingers, right? So go like that. And that's, 
you know, this is gonna be the warm up. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna fill this whole thing up with hands and talk about <laughs> drawing hands in different styles and little tricks that you might be able to use um, when you're doing this. Um, and one of the reasons you might want to draw hands, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep sketching these out. So yeah, there's your cartoony hand. I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna finish up this hand here. Uh, so next to uh, next to uh, your face, hands are the most expressive uh, storytelling uh, expressive thing that you have on your body. So I'm not gonna draw a whole arm. Come on, we gotta fill this whole page up here. All right. I'm not even really worried again. One finger could be, it's not perfect anatomy. I'm just trying to get the shapes down and start drawing, you know, hands. So again, there's my shape. I might do it a little differently. Uh, do that. And uh, I think it's just really important to always practice this. I've drawn tons of hands, you know, not, they're not, not always good hands. <laughs> that hand's a little wonk, but, um, and again, this is not a drawing video, but um, uh, like a how to draw fingers or anything like that, but you're, you're always gonna wanna think of the basic shapes. There's way more, there's way better videos for drawing, but think of your, think of your cylinder. You know, your finger has one, two, three of these little cylinders, right? One, two, three, right? So always be thinking of, always be thinking of your basic cylinders, you know, all that stuff. You're gonna fill your sketchbook up with decapitated fingers now, <laughs> right? Look at that. If you just keep drawing those over and over again, that can even be kind of fun because now, you know, what is it? I don't know. But if, if you connect that to that, right? Now you got sort of a weird finger and let's just, let's just put another one beside it, right? Think about that. Can you see it? Can you see what I'm saying? Once you do enough of this, your, your brain will just start to see shapes like this. And that's kind of the fun thing that you forget when you take it for granted, even when you <laughs> when you start to know how to draw, or you know you're not drawing uh, well enough because you're forgetting this fundamental um, the way shapes work. All right, so like a, like a skeleton hand there, fingers, and then um, you know you might want to do like an expressive hand. I'm not going to get into like foreshortening or anything like that, but. Jazz hands, or stop, you know, the classic uh, thing. Um, maybe like a creepy hand here. I'm gonna draw that, a creepy hand. So yeah, I mean, the basic shape is that bean, but now it could be something like this, like a swooping thing, like a wrist. So there's no real one way to do it. I guess it depends on the type of hand that you're trying to draw. Um, but now we've got practice your wrist thing there. So you know that your wrist isn't, your hand isn't just like, hello, I'm a hand. It's kind of weird and funky and bending off of your arm. Kind of gives it a little more ex like expression, I guess, right? Finish these guys up right here. I feel here without them having little nubbin fingers, little hot dog fingers, yeah. right? Right. Um, we'll go the other way, and um, let me just see real quick. Go the other way with a 
the long guy. One, two, three. right? You might just draw a line like that. So I'm going to use different, different methods for um, drawing hands. Because again, just like the scribble challenge, you might encounter a method where you're like, ooh, I kind of like that style. Or maybe you're drawing in a more realistic uh, style of some kind or not. Um, so you can think more of like that shape as the outer wrist. And then the the arm right leading into the, the wrist bone there. Again, I'm <laughs> not an art teacher. I'm just showing you how I draw or how I think about um, drawing. And the more you do it, you know, you're going to want to do things like this exercise. It might seem silly. I used to think um, every line had to matter for something. Like every line had to be towards a comic project or a panel or some kind of finished piece. And I really took for granted uh, sketching. And that's the, this is the good part about sketching is that, you know, you're gonna force yourself to forget about all that. Forget about the finished piece or who, whose hand this is or what story they're in or who are you showing this to. You're just like, I need to know how to, I need to know where these knuckles go. These four knuckles that are on your hand. Like this is a hand that, that has cut off fingers. And then I'm gonna add those fingers and I'm going to draw through. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques. Again, you know, a good channel for that might be uh, Proko, P-R-O, P-R-O-K-O. <laughs> it's got a lot of cool drawing um, tutorials and things like that. You're going to, you know, I'm sure that Jazza, there's a lot of other cool YouTubers that'll teach you how to draw. I'm just showing you how to think, um, you know, how to think when you're drawing a little bit. That's a weird hand. But uh, again, I'm not too worried about it. Maybe the thumb's a little far away from that. Whoops. As, uh, you know, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob Ross would say, uh, it's okay to make mistakes. There are, there are no mistakes. They're just little happy accidents. And, um, right. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and freehand here. Now I've gotten to the point where I don't need to draw those underlying things. I can go pretty fast and get an expressive, you know, hand. Maybe it's, this one's in a glove. Like an isotoner, like a OJ Simpson glove, but this one fits. <laughs> so, all right, we're about, you know, if I'm drawing hands that size, it's gonna take a while to fill this whole uh, page, but you know what, let's, let's just keep at it a minute. Another cool tip that you can do is you can, if you find a hand that you accidentally made that kind of fits something, like maybe it's holding a coffee cup or something like that, you can now use that hand in your final art. So you might build up your, your own little visual library that you're going to reference. So if you're like, I don't know, which hand do I like the best? I kind of like this little creepy hand here. You know, I might copy that out and put that somewhere or just remember it. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna draw a um, fist, let's see. So fist, you know, you gotta remember that it's, well, those little fingers are folded in. So you got more of a shape like that, three-dimensionally. Let's say these are the knuckles. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna do this fast. One, two, there's a finger, there's a finger, there's a finger. There's a finger. And they kind of, you know, it's not like a square. They kind of fold over each other, right? And fists are hard for people to draw too. Even me sometimes, for sure. My hands don't look perfect. The thumb will kind of stick out a little bit. All right, cool. 
Yeah, this is a good exercise to do. Again, you might do this and we might do this in the future in future videos with like feet or some other body part, eyes, uh, mouths. And um, we're just gonna, you know, make these a little bigger as we go here. Fill up a little, little cheek and fill up the, fill up the canvas a little bit better. Yeah. Again, after you've done it for so many times, you can kind of just see it. Um, or hands working together. I've been thinking a lot about that lately. I just drew, um, you know, yesterday I drew from life a hand that was in, it was a lady's hands and they were kind of like, she was being very pleasant. So she was folding over her hands like this as she was standing. And I'm just gonna draw how I kind of did that. So this hand was just kind of nice over the other hand and just very pleasantly, you know, standing. Like a nice resting hand over her other hand. So then these fingers were popping out. And I never really, you know, it, what do you do? It's like sometimes you're drawing a picture and you're like, what do I do with the hands? What are they going to be doing? And in this case, they were kind of just, you know, she was in a dress and she was standing there. We needed something for her hands to do. And the one of the little reference things I saw in the past just showed a lady holding her hands like that. And I thought, oh, that's neat. You know, same thing with like handshakes or something like that. You might, um, you might get into uh, hand gestures like, like a pointing finger in, going this way. Let's see. Um, this is probably not the best one, but again, doesn't really matter. So I'm seeing that line there. Right? And then when your fingers are kind of folding over and you're only going to be able to naturally do this because if you do it, if you draw and observe uh, lots and lots of hands. So look at pictures, pause a movie. That's another trick you can do. Talk about that sometime. Look at life drawing, look at hands, try to sketch them out and figure out what's going on. And then look also at what other artists have done. But you're going to get faster. This might look like, wow, you can, you know, I, I personally, I don't think that I'm great at hands, but look at, you know, once you start to, once you've done enough of them, you know, you can start to put foreshortening on them. You can figure them out. You can use different styles. You can just use like a real sketchy method. I call it like the claw method here. <laughs> you know, like what if they were, you know, s skeleton hands of some kind. But when you have that, look at that. Like, it's like, it looks like a crazy, crazy claw coming at you. Those are fun to draw, right? Yeah. Again, this is a warm up. This would be something I would do as a warm up drawing. And I'm going to fill up a whole sheet like that, not even really think about it. But occasionally, I might find something on this page. And, um, there's a uh, famous quote from Wally Wood <laughs> that says, uh, uh, how's it go? If you uh, never draw anything you can copy and never copy anything you can trace and never trace anything that you can uh, cut out and paste up. And a lot of artists put that above their uh, boards or whatever, but um, it's confusing because it, it sounds like he's telling you to steal from other artists, but what he's really referencing is what we're doing here. Um, as you're drawing, you want to build your own visual library up in your own uh, style and be able to reference it at a moment's notice so that when someone says, draw a hand that's, um, you know, 
uh, motioning towards something or a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up, you know? I can draw a thumbs up pretty much, you know, in a cartoon style here, right? And then um, you're building that visual library up was the idea. And that's kind of what he was really getting at there, that you might actually be able to paste out this fist or you're copying it from your own mind. You're not just tracing it from another artist. But you can always learn from other artists and you can always learn from other tools by looking at it. Don't be afraid to do that, especially if you're starting out, or even if you're, you know, just feeling uninspired and you want to take some tracing paper, and lay it over your favorite artists or hands that really, that you really uh, uh, want. There's also a quote from uh, Jack Kirby where he actually says something like, if you see a guy's hands, you take those hands, put them in your own artwork. I love that uh, quote from, from Jack. Um, that's what he did. He learned from other artists and was inspired by like Milton Kniff and um, Alex Toth did the same thing where he would uh, look at other people's art and kind of just take little bits and pieces and then form them into your own style. Um, and that's kind of what, you know, doing things like this, uh, these exercises will help you do over time. But you have to do with them. You have to you have to draw every day. And by the way, I'm DJ Kaufman. I run the Draw or Die Club. Uh, I consider it a little drawing club for artists to come and be inspired and just get your creative juices flowing. You know, the world outside might not understand you as an artist, but I think other artists do understand you. So uh, I believe we're all kind of in this together and we need to keep each other inspired. That's the spirit behind the Draw or Die Club. And if you ever want to know more about that, there's links in the description below uh, and uh, ways to contact me if you're looking for some inspiration. Uh, one thing we always highly can encourage in the Draw or Die Club is to draw every day, just like we're doing here. Um, do a little warm up like this every day, even if it's just for 10 minutes. We want to keep you drawing. If you're not drawing and you're just cruising around YouTube looking for things to be inspired by, I hope that you're picking up a pencil and drawing. Uh, and if you want to keep drawing with me, there's some other videos right here on the screen. And be sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the fresh ones. I've got some really fun videos planned uh, to do kind of like this one and just going a little bit more in depth into some uh, ways of thinking as an artist. So I'm going to get back to the drawing board here myself. I hope you're doing the same thing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you real soon. Draw some more hands. I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna fill this whole page up.